introduction mutual funds types of mutual funds investors investing in securities market desires to earn maximum return for a given level of risk but they do not have expertise or they are not professionally qualified to undertake investment analysis also sometimes their investment amount is so small that the investment analysis is not worthwhile in such a case investors can go for indirect investment instead of investing directly an indirect form of investing in securities is mutual fund after studying this module you shall be able to understand the meaning characteristics and advantages of mutual funds learn about different types of mutual fund schemes based on functional and geographical classification identify the mutual fund schemes based on portfolio and other miscellaneous classifications mutual funds meaning of mutual fund mutual fund is a single large and professionally managed investment organization that pools the savings of individual investors and after making proper study of the market and the companies invest it in corporate securities the returns generated out of such investments after charging the fees of portfolio managers are distributed among the investors the securities and exchange board of india defines a mutual fund as a fund established in the form of a trust to raise money through the sale of units to the public or a section of the public under one or more schemes for investing in security including money market instruments a mutual fund serves as a link between the investors and the securities market by mobilizing the savings from the investors and investing them in the securities market to generate returns mutual fund offers an opportunity to invest in a diversified portfolio in spite of having less funds services of good research team along with transparency therefore it is a most suitable form of investment for a common man next characteristics of mutual funds the various features of mutual funds are as follows first mutual fund is a non depository or non banking financial intermediary second mutual funds mobilizes the savings from the people and invest them in the mix of corporate and government securities third mutual funds brings a variety of securities within the reach of the most modest investors fourth mutual funds create awareness among the urban and rural middle class about the benefits of investments in capital markets fifth mutual funds are controlled and regulated by sebi and are therefore considered to be safe sixth mutual fund is an indirect form of investment that is the investors invest in mutual funds and the mutual fund invest in shares bonds debentures and other securities in the capital market seventh mutual fund works as the representatives of the investors next advantages of mutual funds mutual funds make the process of savings and investment simple accessible and affordable some of the advantages of mutual funds are as follows professional and expert services the management of mutual fund is undertaken by professional managers who have the requisite skills and experience to analyze the performance and prospects of various companies they provide continuous supervision and analysis investment consultancy judicious investment decision expert experienced and professional services at very affordable cost all these are hardly possible for an individual investor next portfolio diversification the investors have limited funds to invest therefore they find it difficult to achieve diversification through direct investment on their own mutual funds provide diversification in the selection of portfolio by investing in number of companies across various industries and sectors this diversification ultimately reduces the riskiness of the investment next economies of scale of operations mutual funds have more funds to invest therefore the benefit 
of economies of scale is available to them. Next, less transaction cost. As compared with the cost of investing directly in the capital market, investment through mutual funds is less expensive as the benefit of economies of scale ultimately goes to the investors. Next, transparency. Mutual fund investments provides transparency to the investors. Every month, mutual funds declare their portfolio and with the help of this, the investors are able to know where his or her money is being deployed. In case the investors are not happy with the portfolio, they can withdraw their money at a short notice. Next, flexibility. Mutual funds offer different types of schemes. Investors have the flexibility to make a choice among them or even they have the option to transfer their money from one scheme to other. Next, freedom from housekeeping. After purchasing the units from mutual fund companies, an investor should not bother about the various factors that affect the price of the unit like market behavior, safety of the money, liquidity, etc. Mutual fund company takes care about all these factors. Next, liquidity. Mutual fund units are highly liquid. The fund managers sell the securities whenever there is bull operating in the market and on the other hand, they buy securities when bear are operating in the market. In any other situation, they just hold the securities. Next, well regulated. SEBI well regulates the mutual fund companies. This protection protects the interest of the investors and creates their confidence in the mutual fund industry. Next, spread of risk. Mutual fund companies invest the funds collected in diversified securities. By this risk, get spread amongst various investors and hence in case of any market crash, the loss is being shared by all the investors. Tax benefits. Various tax benefits are now available to the mutual fund investors. Convenience. As compared to the direct investment, investment through mutual funds is convenient as it reduces paperwork, saves time and makes investment easy. Next is classification of mutual funds. Mutual funds are classified on various bases such as functional basis, geographical basis, portfolio basis and on miscellaneous basis which are discussed as follows. Functional classification of mutual fund. On functional basis, mutual funds are classified into open-ended, close-ended and interval schemes or funds. Open-ended mutual fund schemes. An open-ended mutual fund is one that continuously offers to sell and repurchase its unit at net assets value. The maturity period of these schemes are not specified. An investor can buy or sell units at NAV which are declared on a daily basis. Thus, these funds provide investors a freedom to enter and exist from the scheme at any time during the life of the fund. Since these schemes have perpetual succession and flexible corpus, these schemes provide instant liquidity to the investors. Unlike close-ended schemes, these schemes do not have to be listed on the stock exchange. Rather, they are transacted by the mutual fund themselves. The fluctuation in stock price causes the purchase price and sales price of these funds to change daily. Therefore, when there is bearish in the stock market, the NAV of these schemes decreases and the transactions of buying and selling can be done at low price and vice versa. The corpus of these schemes are not fixed and goes on increasing or decreasing depending upon the redemption and purchase of the units by the investors. Next, close-ended mutual fund schemes. Close-ended mutual fund schemes have a fixed corpus stipulated maturity period and a specified subscription period. They are like any other company operating in an industry. The investors are allowed to invest in close-ended schemes when it is launched and that too up to the specified date. Once the initial subscription is over, the units of these schemes are listed on the stock exchange. As the units are listed on the stock exchange, it provides liquidity to the investors.
the shares of close ended schemes are often sells at discount because from the point of view of the investors close ended schemes are more risky as compared to the open ended schemes it is worthwhile for an investor to make investment in close ended scheme only when the discount is very high next interval schemes a scheme that combines the feature of both the open ended and close ended schemes is called the interval scheme in this scheme there is predetermined intervals during which the sale or redemption of units are open at the nav related prices next in discussion is geographical classification of mutual fund on the basis of geographical limits mutual funds are classified as domestic and offshore mutual funds first domestic mutual fund these funds mobilize the savings of the citizens of a country within the country these funds can invest their corpus only in the securities which are issued and traded in the domestic financial markets therefore the market for such funds is limited and confined to the boundaries of a country in which it operates second offshore mutual fund such funds attract foreign capital for investment purposes in the country of the issuing company these funds can invest in the securities of a foreign company such funds facilitate cross border flow of funds which is a direct route for getting foreign currency without getting political interference investors investing in offshore mutual funds can expect high risk and high return the first offshore indian mutual fund was launched by unit trust of india in collaboration with us fund manager mirel lynch canbacks indo swiss himalayan fund 1990 and common wealth equity funds are example of offshore mutual funds in india next is portfolio classification of mutual fund here the basis of classification is nature and types of securities and the basic objective of investment on portfolio basis mutual funds are classified into income fund income fund the basic aim of income fund is to provide safety of investment and steady income to its subscribers therefore such schemes generally invest in fixed income securities like bonds debentures of companies having good credit rating government securities and money market instruments that is why debt fund is the other name given to the income fund there is less risk as well as less return in income fund as compared to the equity fund these funds do not provide the advantage of capital appreciation next is growth fund the basic aim of growth fund is to provide capital appreciation to its subscribers over a long period of time generally such scheme invest their corpus in equity shares of the companies having good growth prospects such funds have high risk in comparison to the income funds in these funds there is no guarantee or assurance of returns such funds are good for investors seeking appreciation over a long period of time next balanced fund the aim of balanced fund is to provide capital appreciation and regular income to its subscribers these funds are an intermediary between income fund and growth fund balanced funds make their investment balance by investing in equity shares as well as in debt instruments of good companies the portfolio of balanced funds comprises of companies having good profit and dividend track record the risk and return of these funds are moderate thus these funds are appropriate for investors looking for moderate growth in comparison to the pure equity funds the navs of such funds are less volatile fluctuations in the share price in the stock markets also affect the prices of these funds next is money market fund the basic aim of such fund is to provide high safety and liquidity with low rate of return such fund provides complete safety to the investors but the yields of such funds are not so high these funds invest in short term money market instruments like treasury bills commercial papers and certificate of deposits these funds are open end funds for short term use and are completely safe 
for the investors. Next is tax saving fund. The basic aim of such funds is to offer tax rebates to the investors under various provisions of the Income Tax Act. Generally, such funds invest in equities which are growth oriented and also provide various tax incentives. Equity linked saving schemes and pension schemes launched by the mutual funds are example of tax saving funds. These schemes are close ended schemes and investments are made for a long period of time. Next is guild fund. These are the funds which invest their corpus exclusively in the government securities. Since such funds have no default risk, these funds are preferred by investors who are very risk averse in nature. As in case of income and debt funds, the NAV of such funds also fluctuate due to change in interest rates and other economic factors. Next is fund of funds. Such funds that make their investments in other schemes of the same fund or in other mutual funds are known as fund of funds. Since such funds spread risk, these provide greater diversification to the investors. Next classification is miscellaneous classification of mutual fund. The other various remaining classifications of mutual fund are as follows. Index funds. When the investment by the mutual fund is made according to a particular index, such as the BSE sensitive index, SNNP, NSE 50 index, such funds are called index funds. The weights of investment in different securities are same as that of the index. The increase or decrease in the index causes the same percentage increase or decrease in the NAVs of such schemes. Under such fund, no extra effort is made by the fund manager to identify the stocks for investment disinvestment. The fund manager merely tracks the index on which it is based. Index funds are very popular outside the India. Next is sectoral funds. When the investments are made in specific core sectors like energy, telecommunications, IT, construction and transportation, the funds are called the sectoral funds. The performance of the industries determine the return of these funds. These funds are considered to be high risky as compared to the other diversified funds. Next is exchange traded funds. Exchange traded funds are listed on the stock exchanges. They are traded like individual securities on the stock exchanges. Such funds are quite similar to the index funds. These funds do not sell their shares directly to the retail investors for cash. Rather, shares are offered to the investors over the stock exchanges. The price of these shares is determined by the demand and supply conditions and the market value of the shares. An example of exchange traded fund is UTI's Sundar's listed in Mumbai Stock Exchange. Exchange traded funds are generally preferred because they are listed in the stock exchanges and also they provide liquidity to the investors. ETFs are basically passively managed funds and their value changes with the value of the index. Next is load and no load funds. Various expenses such as brokerage, marketing expenses and communication expenses are incurred by the mutual funds. These expenses are known as load and are covered by the investors at the time of buying and selling the units. On the other hand, the funds that do not charge any load or fees at the time of entry or exit are called no load funds. All the transactions of sale and repurchase of units are done at NAV in case of no load funds whereas the repurchase is made at a price less than NAV and sales is made at a price more than NAV in case of load funds. Generally an entry load is charged in case of equity oriented funds while no loads are being charged in case of income fund. Now let us recapitulate what we have learned so far. Investors do not have expertise to undertake investment analysis. Therefore, they go for indirect investment instead of investing directly. Mutual fund is a professionally managed organization that pools the savings 
of individual investors and invest it in corporate securities. Mutual fund serves as a link between investors and the securities market. Mutual funds provide various advantages like professional and expert services, portfolio diversification, economies of scale of operations, less transaction cost, transparency, flexibility, freedom from housekeeping, liquidity, well-regulated spread of risk, tax benefits and convenience. There are four main categories of mutual funds in which it is classified. These are functional, geographical, portfolio and miscellaneous classifications. Open-end funds continuously offers to sell and repurchase its unit at NAV, whereas for close-ended funds there is fixed corpus, stipulated maturity period and specified subscription period. Interval scheme is a combination of open-ended and close-ended schemes. Domestic mutual funds make their investment in securities that are traded domestically, whereas in offshore funds the investment is made in international securities also. The basic aim of income fund is to provide safety of investment and steady income to its subscribers. Whereas for growth fund, it is to provide capital appreciation to its subscribers over a long period of time. Balance fund provides both regular income and capital appreciation to its subscribers. Thank you.